Hello, this is George Jettison of Dallas, Texas. Konbanwa. So, I'm a half Japanese person. Therefore, I know everything about sake. Just like most Japanese, half Japanese person. So, uh, today, I have, I have a, a sake, it's called Gunma Izumi. I bought it from a local market, Japanese market called Mitsuwa Marketplace. Anyways, since I have sake, uh, I'm gonna talk about the origin of sake, mostly the mythology and the history of it. And I know most people, they have no idea about Japanese mythology. So, uh, the exp explanation it might take a little longer. I'll try my best. I've I never done this explanation before. So uh, I'll try my best, okay? Uh, first of all, uh, mythology. J Japan has its own mythology, kind of like a Greek mythology, uh, <clears throat> where it, like a Greek mythology is a really good example where uh, there were time of gods that kind of created the world and then its descendants and then its descendants, descendants and they're like ruling god like Zeus and then like the other ones like all the uh, multiple like gods, Apollon, Achilles, whatever uh, that, that represents certain element or certain like Venus is beauty or whatnot Aphrodite, sorry, not Venus is different Aphrodite is the beauty, or Poseidon is the ocean. Uh, it's pretty. It's really similar to that. So there are three like really main gods. There there are gods before them, but there's there are three main ones. One's called Amaterasu. Amaterasu is the god of sun. The sun, sun god. It's uh, today's Japan's. Uh, Shinto belief. Shinto is not a. I I never consider Shinto as a religion. It's not a religion. It's 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 more like a spirituality or mythology or or common belief or human behavior as a group, like as a as a group that been passed down. So I wouldn't say it's. A religion in a sense of uh, it like a <clears throat> Christian or Jewish or Islam like Muslim but uh, Amaterasu the Sun God is considered like the highest of the rank and they have three siblings another one is Tsukuyomi which is the moon god the god of night and then uh, Susano Susano is the god of the ocean so Amaterasu is a female supposedly female male male uh, Amaterasu controls, rules the uh, the God's realm. The, it's called uh, Amatsukuni. It's like the heavens. She rules the heavens. Susano was in the heavens, but he did some bad things. So Amaterasu said, like, ah, I don't want you. I'm going to kick you out. So like, she kicked Susano out, and then he landed to earth uh, it's called Ashiwaro Nakatsuki anyway she, he came down to earth and I was like hanging, hanging around and then uh, he come across with uh, this uh, couple older couple that's like crying <laughs> like oh what's up what's up what, what are you crying like oh there's this like dragon or like snake or I mean this this creature monster that uh, it's like attacking our village. It's a monster that has eight heads. And it's attacking that monster and it requiring there the monster is requiring my daughter. So like I have to give away my daughter and they're gonna like eat my daughter up. My daughter's gonna die. So someone goes, oh yeah? Okay. Uh, if I if I kill this monster, can I marry your daughter? It's like, 
Yes, yes, please. Yes, yeah. Yes, please. So Susano came up with this plan where like, okay, uh, the monster is it's called Yamata no Orochi. Yamata no Orochi. The monster is coming. So okay, uh, let's get, let's, let's prepare eight jugs of sake or alcohol and then just pour, lay it down. The monster is gonna come and then eight heads, right? He's gonna eat eight, uh, drink out the eat eight sake, very strong. Uh, the monster will like get drunk and then pass out. And Susanna will be like, Hur! kill kill the monster. Done. Win. So he did that and it was a bit successful. And then he found like a really nice sword and that kind of stuff. But that's a, that's a de detailed story. Anyway, this is where the sake or alcohol is mentioned first in uh, the mythology. Uh, but it won't it won't be until a little bit later generation where like the story of how we found out how to make sake come in being. So there's uh, there's a guy called Okuni Nushi. Okuni Nushi means big country uh, owner. This is supposedly it's a godson. Uh, they're supposedly they're related, descendant, and then he later on builds his own country or takes over his own country uh that supposedly like it's not this is like before history so we don't know for sure but supposedly it's the izumo this area so it's it's on the of course uh japan is island so it's like in the middle oh this cannot write Anyways, in the middle, it's old mountain, so like, it's like hard to go back and forth, like old mountain. Oh, this one really cannot work. All right. Anyways, he supposedly built Izumo Empire. Right? So he he was a leader of like this region. And then there's a another guy that Sukunahiko, Sukunahiko. So not this this person helped Okuninushi to help he helped them build the country together and he has the story for the origin of sake but he supposedly he brought all the knowledge like how to do what like medicine or technology or whatnot uh, so this guy has a story of how to make sake and uh, it's a it's a bird sparrow like whatever like small bird like thank you small bird so he, he had like a rice right and then it's like it cooked rice and then the bird came in and then like ching -ching, and then like the bird stole the rice and then it got dropped into uh, a bamboo a bamboo bamboo grows like grows and then uh, it has like parts of it like that You've seen it before, right? If you cut a bamboo like here, then like it it becomes like a kind of like this. It becomes like a cup because it's, it's, this is closed. So there's water here, and then the uh, the bird dropped the rice into the the bamboo with water in it, and then it fermented, and then it became. Like alcoholic, so like Sukunabiko, uh, he saw it and oh, oh rice, uh, ferment, water, oh sake. He, that's why he like he, he. That's a story that he found out how to make sake, and this relates to the actual, like, scientific natural like way to make sake. It's. And it's called chewing sake. It's called kuchi kami sake. Kuchi is mouth, kami is bite. Sake. Chewing sake. Uh, this, you, you do it today, it'll work. So basically, you take a, a rice, 
and then you chew it in your mouth and then yeah, you spit it out and you collect that give it a couple of days it's gonna become sake and uh, it's it's true it's because how it works is because uh, rice is a starch so by chewing the rice in your mouth with uh, your enzyme that you have in your spit basically has, reacts to the starch and it breaks down the starch and it turns into sugar so today we use uh, koji which is a type of type of mold uh, microorganism you put it in so it does the same thing but you can have a similar effect or it does the same thing basically just by, eat, by chewing it so this is the origin where they he found out the, the really basic uh, way to make sake if you like anime there's a really popular anime movie called uh, Your Name. Uh, the, the, the scene comes up towards the early part of uh, the movie. The, the heroine and then her uh, sister do a ceremony and then she'll like, eat and then she'll like, spit out to like, spit it out. Here's a scene. That's, that's it. That's she, that, they're doing that. I think some parts of Japan, like they still do it as a, as a ceremony. I, I'm pretty sure, but I, I don't I haven't done that much research. But I am 95% sure uh, it's involved in a ceremony today. Okay, so that's how they came up with the sake. Uh, in order to explain later about sake, I have to explain a little bit because. A lot of Japanese people might kind of know the story, but English speaking people usually don't know the story. So, Okuni Mushi, this guy built this country, right? He's a descendant of the gods. He's considered god too, but anyways. Uh, he built this country, and then later on, there was a, a, a different group which is also a descendant of her descendant of her right so that if you root it the same descendant of Amaterasu uh, and then one of her family was supposedly what they say is around this area Kyushu Island and then it's called Jinmu Tenno it's the first emperor it's called Jinmu Tenno the first Emperor. Supposedly he came, I mean, actually he came like here and then walked over here. He came to here, this is Ise. Ise is like right here. Ise is, a, there's a shrine called Ise Shrine. Uh, the main god is Amaterasu. Uh, so today's Japan's leader shrine is here, Ise. So Jinmu, first emperor, came, started from here, and then he, he came, travel. Uh, he, he wanted to come to, to, like like here, but there was like a guys that were hanging out, like that was like a battling. So he decided to go over, and then he walked in, and then he took over this region. It's called Yamato today. He took over his region and then built his country which that country originally was called Yamato uh, changed name to Hinomoto Himoto Nihon Nippon Ippon Ippon Japan 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 so uh, the first emperor Jinmu emperor is origin of Japan as a country today so like we need and then sorry that was like that was the base story and then a couple of generations later they were they were this region there was another country made by Okunimushi right 
and they said, hey, we are stronger. Uh, I can cause war and then I can take over you with with force but you know like let's just join let's just come let's combine the country and you you join my country and I'm sure there were a lot of dramas back then it's it's not really mentioned on the, the history or myth it's not even history it's mythology it's like it's like beyond before history uh, because th that's why there's no dates or anything when this we don't know when it happened but through archaeological research like it's semi proven that uh, the country give up give out so these guys told these guys to like give up your country and then join us and then they said okay I'm gonna not fight and then I'll join you. So this really happened. The, because uh, archaeologically, this happened, and like, I really don't know, I forgot the like, four fifth like BC. Uh, and then there are a lot of, like, from here, there are, you can find a lot of like weapons. So they had army, they have forces, uh, but from the bones that was discovered at time, there were like absolutely no bones that was result that had a sign of a physical injury or or injury through a battle like or like a like a your head broken or your you have an arrow like broke whatever like there there are archaeological like facts that you can discover from like a human bone that ah this guy died from battle or this guy died from disease, like, I mean, just like from sickness or whatever. Uh, no sign, no sign. So this really happened, like give up. Like, and then that, that way they, con they, they combine their country, like they have this, they have this, and then later on they moved up north, north, north. And then today it's, this whole thing is Japan. So started here and then still today the same family as a leader which is today's emperor is 126 I think generation counting back from that okay sorry going back to the sake uh, 10th emperor Sujin emperor uh, there's no dates record so he believes that he was around uh, one first century BC, so like uh, 150 BC till 50 BC ish, supposedly. Uh, when his time, there was a there were multiple disaster that occurred. One was like a disease, which uh, from the documents it's guessed that it's a uh, smallpox, I think. So a disease spread out and then a lot of people died and then they were like uh, like the farming was destroyed everything was like so a lot of bad things happened while he was in crown so he went to the shaman and then like he tried to like by like chanting uh, he tried to get a message like ah oh, damn what should I do so many there's so many bad things are happening to my people climate's like, going bad like disease are going around what what, what can i do uh, and then the god like the upper say told them i am my name is omononushi omononushi is often combined with okuninushi uh, there are multiple theories but in general, it should be a god, or I mean, god is, I can say the god, the god from this, these guys, the, their god, not their god. Said to that is, is their god that was in Yamato region, 
So like, I'm from here, but I'm, I live, I'm, my spirit is here. But they also say, oh, it's, it's, it's this god's dark side. Kind of, there are multiple origins of that. But uh, I'm mad. I'm the god of this region. I am mad. Symbolized as a white snake, right, by the way. And then, okay, you you build a shrine for me. Here's this uh, mountain here called Miwa Mountain. I live here. You build a shrine, and then you you worship me as a god. Japan has gods, so it's one of them, right? You worship me, you take care of me, and you also bring sake to me. Sake to me. If you worship me, build a shrine, and take care of me, bring sake to me, then I'm gonna cure all these problems, the disease and like lack of uh, nutrition or like the crops like dying or whatever. So he did that. So that this is the very first shrine in history today. It's called Omiwa Shrine. Omiwa Jinja. Omiwa Jinja. Omiwa Shrine. Uh, the god is considered usually there's like a some sort of either like a mirror or a sword or or whatever but um, the god is is a mountain and uh, you can't you need permission to go into the mountain I've been to this shrine it's amazing uh, I did not have time to go into the, the mountain itself next time I go out I'm gonna because you gotta apply the day before and then you go back the next day in the morning and you, can, you get to go uh, no cameras absolutely no cameras uh, you're really not supposed to say anything you're not supposed to talk about what you have seen or experienced inside there I'm, I really want to go I will, I will go one day anyways sake All right, they, going back to sake so Omonoshi God told Sujin Emperor in order to stop this disease and all the, the hell give me sake so okay so he he got with this guy Takahashi Ikuhino Mikoto which was a, a a guy and then then together have established a way to make sake so that they can offer to Omonoshi to to stop the all this so this is the origin of the actual like sake as a as a manufacturer as a making as a craft today and it's, it started here Yamato so that's how sake got what started uh, used be, like to be used for shrines and ceremonies and to offer to the god and that is exactly how it's done today also so sake Japanese sake and Shinto belief or system is it's like one thing like it's, it was it's you can never talk separately about Shinto or how basically how Japan came and being as a, as a country in sake it's exactly the same and uh, for ceremony it's pretty much used in every single ceremony like uh, you harvest rice. Rice is the main grain of Japan. That's why sake is so important. You harvest rice in the fall and then you of course eat it. You store it, keep it, eat it. But you also make sake during the winter uh, for natural reasons. Like there are a lot of germs that will spoil the sake. If you make it during winter 
less germ so you can make a safer socket right and all those like and then using the koji yeast you spread it out and you make it this way all these knowledge they had the knowledge because it was important for them to make stable socket because it wasn't for fun it wasn't for oh, I want to get drunk so I came up with it it was for ceremony you you must have this otherwise the God's gonna get mad and it's gonna destroy the world so it's gonna kill everybody it was it was like a big deal so they were so this guy came up and then now there's like a there's the Miwa like mountain and there's a uh, Omiwa shrine, right? Main. On the side, there's a shrine for him. It's a, that's the origin, like sake brewer's base shrine. And back then, it was like a learning, it was like a lab laboratory slash academy ish for, like, that's where the knowledge were. All the knowledge was piled, like, stocked here and then it spread to other shrines other regions all over japan about their the shrines because like kind of like the medieval time or like churches like you you put shrines all over japan and that's that was like the part of the communication system right like both belief and cultural and like the actual um, run the government uh, they, they put shrines all over, so you need the sake knowledge in that region because you cannot make it and then trans transport it. It's like you cannot, so you gotta just gotta make it there. So you gotta send the knowledge, and those were used in ceremonies uh, to purify. You drink sake to purify yourself. You pour sake. To purify the land for example uh, if you build a house from scratch or if you build something house is a good a really good example if you build a house from scratch you do it's called a ceremony called Jichin Sai Jichin Sai means ground settlement ceremony so you are basically cleansing the land make it all the bad things go away make it clean spiritually clean before you start building your house and you still do that today you do it today too uh i haven't been to a jichin side like probably 20 years ago when my cousin like built their house like pretty much ground up they had a house but they Pretty much broke it, everything, and built a new one. Uh, they did that, and still very common. Uh, like weddings, sake is involved. If you do a Shinto style wedding, it's it's not really popular anymore uh, to do a Shinto style wedding. But if you do it, that if you use if you get married in a shrine, you sake is it's gonna be involved. Uh, New Year's, you drink otoso, uh, which originally you soak herbs into a sake and then you, you drink that to cleanse and then like, it's for like better health. Uh, all that kind of stuff. And then of course, uh, I said brewer's offering. So brewers exist because shrine existed all over. If you build, you need a shrine because there are gods all over. So you have a brewer to offer sake to the gods. So that's, you have them. And then if you go to a bigger shrine in Japan, almost everything, all, all the ones, they, you see like a barrel, like this big sake barrel. Uh, those are offerings from the brewer to the shrine. They, 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 they post it, they give it to them and in return they will get 
like a blessing or charms, which uh, I won't talk about detail today, but it's like it typically it's been a, a ball of cedar leaves. And that's why you see cedar leaves. Um, I didn't, I thought it was gonna be too long to explain, so I didn't really include it, but, but uh, that's another small story where sake brewers and Shinto shrine are like super closely related. Yep, so it's cool, right? Yeah, this offering for the gods. And today there are so many good sakes available. And there will be, uh, I will post more videos into the actual study, like what, what differences and that kind of stuff. I'll do one on one and then eventually I'll do more intense extensive stuff uh, but i hope you like the video it's gonna be it's different so hope you liked it hope you learned something <laughs> other countries history is, can be cool too sometimes bye bye